there, Wes Schneider here with another tailgate technology session brought to you by Frontier Precision. Today we're up in northern Minnesota uh, in Bemidji. We're actually going to go ahead and be talking about the e-bubble and tilt functionality within the R12 receiver. Uh, that same functionality though does go back to our R10 Model 1s as well um, and the R10 Model 2 is right in between there. So today we're going to be talking about some of the settings involved with that within our survey style. We're going to be talking about calibrating it and then uh, some of the field functionality of it. All right, so before we head on down by the lake there, let's go ahead and take a peek at those settings. All right, so we're gonna be in Access 2020. We're gonna jump into our settings here. We're gonna go down to our survey style, jump into our VRS survey style that I'm gonna be using today. Let's go into our rover options first. It all kind of starts here. So if I scroll down to the bottom, you can see our tilt functions are turned on. So it's important if you're gonna be using that e-bubble or any of the tilt functionality that we have that checked on. All right, if you go ahead now, and uh, for example, let's jump right into rapid point down there. You can see our tilt warnings from the factory is defaulted on, so that will give you a warning if you're not leveled up, and we have our green e-bubble ready to rock for taking that measurement. If you're above your tolerance, uh, or outside of that, then you're gonna have a warning. You can still force store the shot. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off that tilt warning though for now, except I'm gonna go into my topo point. Same thing here. I can go ahead and have my tilt warnings checked on if I wish to see that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off for today too. Compensated point. This is one of the functionality options I was talking about out in the field. Uh, so if you do wanna go ahead and turn that on, um, you're going to have the capabilities of taking uh, measurements up to 15 degrees out of plumb with compensated point as long as you do your calibrations correctly. Uh, so if you want to again have your auto measure turned on, if you're within those tolerances, um, it will auto measure your point. I'm going to go ahead and leave that unchecked though for now as well. Accept that and store those. All right, we're all set up. Let's head on down to the beach and uh, show you how to get this thing calibrated and show you some of the functionality of uh, the tilt and e-bubble within access using the R12 down to the uh, R10s. All right, let's go. All right, it doesn't get much better than this. Check out that, uh, that lake, it's gorgeous out tonight. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into doing our calibration. We hit our menu drop down. We're gonna go under our instrument, tilt sensor options. We're going to jump right into our calibration. I'll cover these uh, um, other breakdowns here in a minute. And we're going to hit calibrate. Start. All right, so what we're doing now is we're calibrating the internal tilt sensor to our trusted source. So, for example, today I'm using my GNSS rod that I did check on our uh, bubble jig back at the office before I left today. Uh, if you have a trusted tri-brack back at the office too, um, throw that on a tripod. Uh, this particular tilt uh, sensor can be calibrated in the office. You don't have to worry about magnetic interference like the next two that we're going to be doing. All right, next one uh, is our magnetometer calibration status. Okay, again, both of these are highly susceptible to magnetic signatures. We want to, don't want to do it around the other metallic objects like your vehicle, for example. Uh, big old street signs underneath high um, power lines or something like that. There's a nice open field bes beside our office that we do for calibrating um, uh, the new gear um, on a regular basis. So it's nice and far away. Okay, so this first one, I'm gonna go ahead and just bring it down. Pop it off. Go ahead and hit calibrate there. So what you're gonna do is you can watch that animation. It slowly uh, both pivots and rotates the receiver head. Just picture 12 axes on there and we're trying to hit each of those. If you don't, you fully rotate around 360 degrees, just slowly keep on going. All right, start. I may speed this up a bit so you don't have to watch me uh, spin in this thing.
All right, just ding that me, let me know I got that first one completed. So this next step, what I like to do is we're gonna go ahead and pop this off our uh, bracket here. Drop it all the way down. Let's try and level up as best you can. And I'm gonna be slowly rotating and holding on to the lock collar here so we don't lock ourselves in place. And start. This is where we speed it up again. All right, just dinged at me again, so we're all done with that. Okay, one of the key functions now that we have this all calibrated, I'm gonna back up a step here, and I'm gonna turn on my e-bubble with that soft key on the bottom, is that that tilt sensor is now calibrated in the direction of it, of the face of the R12, or the older R10s, is facing back at us, the data collector. So that way, as we're tilting the bubble, it's actually tilting in the right direction. So that's gonna be really important. You'll notice I've actually orientated my bubble on the rod, facing that direction so that everything lines up when I set this up. And lock that back in place. So again, as I start to use that tilt, you can actually see the bubble going in the right direction. If you're finding it difficult to level that up, look up once and see if uh, the head's in an opposite direction. <laughs> All right, uh, one of the things I like to do first is if I take care of my rod and my GPS head and I'm not tossing it around, I could actually bump up my age limit a little bit if I had to, okay? So let's go ahead and hit my right arrow. I'm gonna hit edit, and we're gonna go into our um, 90 day there. Enter that. You can see now you'll actually get an expiration of that in uh, 90 days. All right, any of other sensitivity, so for example, our e-bubble, you can see if I bump it up to our 70 minutes, you can see that um, shrink. Go down to 20 minutes, for example, you see that get larger now. I'm going to go back to the default of our 40 minutes. Our sensitivity is set to medium. You can see our tolerance there. If you have questions about any of the information being displayed at any point in time within Access, whatever screen you're in, you can hit that menu drop down and go into the help function. And you can see it jumps us right into all of the breakdowns of what each of those actually mean to us. So the tilt tolerance, for example, all the way down to our e-bubble response. All right, so let's go ahead and accept that. Let's go in and fire up our survey here. I'm gonna go into measure R12. Get this going so we can get a shot measured. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, but I'm having to uh, fight a little bit with the, the geese back here. So <laughs> it's always something. Waiting for information from the base. All right. So you can see our bubble, I can move it around. If it's totally in the way, I can turn it off. And with the soft key on the bottom, I can bring it back up. So for example, I'm gonna get a shot here. Let's go ahead and start this at point one. And I'm watching precision values there. Maybe I wanna move my bubble right up by the precision so I can monitor and level at the same time I'm taking that measurement. Everything is grouped together. I'm not shifting my focus away from um, the important function. So let's go ahead and get that measure in. We're about 300 by 300, so let's go ahead and store. Observation store. All right, that was in topo point. Now let's go ahead and check out that compensated point we were talking about. When I switch it to compensated, you see that bubble, and I'm gonna move it out here for you, a little bit more in focus. We now have, I like to call these our tree rings. So you can actually see how well, if 
I go all the way out to that 15 degrees, see it starts going yellow and red. That lets you know that we're past our maximum point. The more out of tolerance it is, um, the less accurate it becomes. As we're bringing it back up, we got our green. So for example, here's a common one, maybe the bottom lip of a culvert, for example. Let's go ahead and get this measurement. Measure. The biggest thing with compensated is holding it steady. It's averaging out a few shots. There we can go ahead and store that position. If you don't have a bipod width, try and still hold it steady, say on the top lip of the culvert uh, with some lath, some way of just allowing it to average that out. It's going to be just as, um, as accurate as possible then when we do that. So let's go ahead and check out our, our quality there. So I'm going to tap those points and do an inverse. So horizontally, it's about two hundredths, vertically about a hundredth difference between the perfectly plumb and out of plumb measurement. All right. Very good. I, uh, I encourage you to use that. Uh, I'm pretty much using the tilt functionality with that e-bubble every day. Uh, that allows me, again, like I mentioned, to have my focus uh, on the screen and I'm not shifting from the bubble on the rod and back and forth as I'm trying to make sure I'm holding it, especially if I'm not using a bipod like, like today. Um, having that functionality there. I'm just going to switch down to rapid, again leveling up. Just to be within the green and measure. Observation story. There we go. Give her a try. Any questions, you're more than um, uh, welcome to leave me a comment and I can sure get back to you on that. Uh, I also want to put the invite out if you have anything else you'd like me to uh, demonstrate or really dig into. Um, if it involves being on the beach, I'll, I'll do it every time. All right. Uh, again, thanks for joining us and I look forward to our. Uh, our next talk. All right. Have a good night.